Hello, I'm Father Gregory Pine, and this is Pines with Aquinas, and today we're going to answer the question, do we, as Catholics, worship the Blessed Virgin Mary? Let's go. So in answering the question, we can ask first, what does it mean to worship? We're accustomed, I think, to thinking on very specific terms, and when we do that, we typically think of worship that's really only due to God alone. So by defining it as such, we just rule everyone else out. But that hasn't always been the case. That has, has, has not always been the way in which um, we, as human beings, we as Christians, have thought about worship. So specifically, like a kind of more medieval notion of worship, is that worship is just that whereby one shows another honor or respect of some sort. So you'll hear it sometimes cited that in the Anglican rite of marriage, the exchange of vows, one used to say, like the man would say to the woman, or the woman would say to the man, I thee worship with my body which is to say, I declare thee worthy, or I declare thee honorable, or I declare, I, I declare thee um, in some way meriting of respect. So there, it's kind of more basic, and it's the type of category in which you can include not only God, but also other human beings. So then the question is, um, all right, ought we then to distinguish among different kinds of worship, if this is the loose definition of worship that we're taking? An answer to which, I would say yes, most certainly. So there's the type of worship that would only be accorded to God alone, and then there's the type of worship which could be extended to excellent human beings, most notably the saints. So when it concerns God alone, we often use the Greek word latreia, or kind of its Latin equivalent, latria, and the way that we receive that in our English terminology is that we'll talk about sacrifice or adoration, things along those lines. And then when we talk about the worship that's accorded to other human beings, we'll talk about it as the Greek word here is dulia, um, or when we use like its Latin and English equivalents, we'll talk about veneration. And like we said earlier, like respect, honor, these types of things, worthiness. Okay, <clears throat> so there are certain things, uh, certain ritual acts, certain ritual gestures, certain ritual mentalities, one assumes, that really can only be referred to God alone. Why? Well, because God's different, because God transcends not only all of the gods, as the scriptures put it, but transcends human beings. So the sacrifice of the mass, the act of sacrifice itself, or adoration, the type of worship that we extend to God recognizes him as our creator, as our redeemer, as our end, which is true only of him. And so we can only refer our whole life to God because only God can receive that reference. Um, whereas in the case of the saints, there's a twofold kind of action that we see here. Um, it's like we're observing in a laboratory, so like, mm, let's see here. It's like a twofold type of thing that we do. So one is just this simple act of veneration, whereby we say, what God did in you is awesome. So it says in the scriptures that God is glorious in his saints, and we are responsible for acknowledging that in gratitude, or just so as to be reconciled to the truth of reality, rather than closing our eyes to the fact that God did an awesome thing. We want to tell it to other people, we want to tell it to those whom God himself has transformed by grace, that they are awesome. So this is just what we mean by veneration. You know, well done, you killed it, you're awesome, kudos. Um, that's a little bit, never mind, you get it. Uh, and then the other thing that we want to do is to ask their intercession, to ask them to pray for us. And this too makes total sense, or I suppose it makes a lot of sense to a lot of us, because we're accustomed to asking other people to pray for us, because we think that prayers matter. And the reason we think the prayers matter is because God has revealed it so, and because, because God wills it so. So when God brings about salvation in time and space, in a salvation history, he does so by using human beings, not because he needs them, or not in any way to, like, to compromise the mediation of our Lord Jesus Christ, but in a certain way to extend it, or to perpetuate it, or to give us as human beings the opportunity to, to have a share in it, to experience it in some way, shape, or form. And so, during our earthly lives, God gives us the opportunity to be mediators of grace, but beyond our earthly lives, that opportunity, it continues, it persists. Because during our lives, we've merited certain graces, we've merited certain glories, and God permits us to be instrumental in distributing them from heaven when we are called upon by those who ask our prayers. So um, it's all by virtue of a, of a kind of divine dispensation that we can be of service to each other in a communion of saints. And again, it makes sense because God himself is a communion of persons. He wills that we come to him in communion, which is to say in the context of the church, by the administration of the sacraments, by the offering and answering of prayers, things like that, right? And so when we look to the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
We would say of her that God is indeed glorious in his saint because there is no other saint who kind of tells forth the life of grace more excellently than does the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we accord to her a kind of highest veneration, which is sometimes called in the tradition hyperdulia. But beyond that, we also ask her intercession because she was a kind of mediator during her life, not in the same way as Christ, but by a kind of extension of the logic of his mediation. She became, in truth, the mother of God. And then, John 19, when the Lord looks down at St. John and says, Behold your mother, we are entrusted to her who is, in fact, the mother of the church. So she continues to minister graces to us, provided only that we call upon her. And so we pray to her. We ask her intercession that she would bring about through the merits of her earthly life as God gives her to do so, bring about a change in our own, bring about conversion in our own life, bring about the resolution of whatever problem. So we pray because she's awesome and we pray because she's efficacious or because her prayers are efficacious. And insofar as that's a kind of veneration or respect or an honor that we give to her, it's a kind of worship. Does this in any way imperil the worship that we show to God? No, because that is of a different sort. And as a result of which, we can say, yes, we worship the Blessed Virgin Mary, albeit with these caveats, albeit with these qualifications, and that in doing so, we advance in our own journey towards salvation. So boom, that is the answer. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so and push the little bell so that Google... <laughs> Google... <laughs> so that Google will be forced to tell you when other videos of this sort come out. And then if you haven't yet checked out God's Planning, please do so, podcast to which I contribute with five other Dominican friars. G-O-D, S-P-L, A-I-N, I-N-G. All right, praying for you. Please pray for me. Catch you next time. I'm Pines with Aquinas.